everyone. This is Heidi St. John. Thanks for tuning in today. This is the Off the Bench podcast. Today, I'm joined by Brad Clippert, who's running for Secretary of State as a write-in candidate in Washington State. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about why the position of Secretary of State matters and what it looks like to get a write-in candidate elected. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, so I'm glad you guys have joined me. A couple things before I get started. I am leaving today for my women's retreat in Salt Lake City. Really excited. We're going to spend the weekend focusing a little bit on Psalm 119, where David asked the Lord to renew his life with his goodness. There's a lot of stuff going on in the culture right now that really does require renewal by the Lord. We've just lived through two and a half years of an unconstitutional, illegal highly unethical, unscientific, absolutely ridiculous takeover of our constitutional freedoms by the Biden administration, by uh, here in Washington state, by Governor Jay Inslee, who, by the way, just let go of his emergency powers over 900 days that this guy was a tyrant here in Washington state. We have a leadership crisis in this country. And the Bible says that God can renew our hearts. So even as we're walking through still a lot of this stuff and it's so difficult, we trust the Lord of heaven's armies, but we do more than trust him, right? We believe him, we take him at his word, and then we act when God gives us opportunity. One of the ways that we can act, and you guys heard me talk about this earlier this week with my friend, David Medina, one of the ways that we act is by voting, by getting involved civically. I had the opportunity to meet Brad Clippert about a year and a half ago, and I loved him immediately. This is a guy that loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. His life demonstrates that. He loves the Lord and he loves people. It reminds me a lot of my friend, Ray Reynolds, who's running for sheriff in Clark County, Washington. Uh, Brad is running for secretary of state. He's got a bit of an uphill climb because he's running as a write-in candidate. And so I've invited him on the show today to talk about his run. And I know you guys are going to be blessed and encouraged whether you live in Washington State or not. Brad Clippert, welcome to the show. Thank you. How do you say, John? Well, I'm glad that you're here today. I want to jump right into the run that you are really, you're putting an all-out effort into running for the Secretary of State in Washington State. And you're running as a write-in candidate. But before I get into how people can can vote for you, tell us a little bit about yourself because you've been involved in the legislature here in Washington for quite a while. Yeah, I've been a state legislator, still am. Uh, I represent the 8th Legislative District here in Tri-Cities, Washington, position one, and I will continue to represent the 8th Legislative District until the person who is re- uh, elected to replace me is sworn into office on the second Monday of January 2023. So, uh, yeah, I've been serving in the state legislature seven terms now, 14 years, and it's been an honor and a pleasure to do so, but I feel God has called me to do some other things. All right. So you're also, you wear a couple of different hats, don't you, Brad? I I do. And you can see by my head that that's a good thing. So I do. I um, (laughs) am a sheriff's deputy, just climbed out of the uh, cop car a few minutes ago, took my uniform off, uh, threw on a shirt to be ready for this interview. And uh, for 34 years, I served this country in uniform service. Uh, Just retired this last January at the rank of colonel, flew helicopters for the Army for 20 years. So, yeah, done that master's degree in teaching. Uh, uh, My bachelor's degree is a double major in biblical studies and behavioral science. So uh, serving is what I love to do because that's what I feel that God has called each and every one of us to do. So I just want to someday arrive in heaven and hear him say those words those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, I have a feeling that someday those are exactly the words you're going to hear because your life has really exemplified service. And I've said this many times, and it's uh, part of the reason why I continue to just believe that we have got to get better, more quality leaders into positions of authority in this country. Leadership is really a servant role. Uh, Those people who ascend to positions of leaders really should be servants at their core wanting the best for the people, not the best for themselves. And no, nowhere can this be better seen than here in Washington State, where we've got career politicians who have been serving for decades, and they're literally running this, this state into the ground, this beautiful place that is Washington State. You're running for Secretary of State. And before I get into that kind of the, the hows of how people can uh, write you in, because that's what this is, it's a write-in campaign, why is the role of Secretary of State so important? Because people are getting ready to vote all over the country right now. 
and a lot of them have secretary of state positions on their ballots. What is the job of the secretary of state? Well, I'm sure it, it's a little bit different from state to state. State to state in Washington state is defined both in our constitution and in our RCWs, the revised code of Washington, the responsibilities of the secretary of state. Most importantly, the secretary of state in Washington state oversees our election process. And um, I had run um, for Congress in the primaries, I did not make it to the generals. Um, the Lord and I had some conversations. I did most of the talk, well, all the talking. He belly laughed as I talked to him <laughs> about my plans for success and how I did not like how things turned out. And uh, then some leaders contacted me and said that, Brad, we find that you are at the top of the list over and over again, the most qualified person to run as a Republican write in for Secretary of State because no Republicans made it through the primary. So after some prayer and some deliberation and talking to some people that I respect, and um, I said, yes. So here we go. And and uh, the Lord said to me, see, Brad, you didn't trust me. You thought that you had lost and it was all over for you. But I had a plan and I've been working behind the scenes. And you see how now, Brad, if I can use you to get this election process uh, fix in Washington state. We can actually get the people elected to office that need to be there without any cheating, without any uh, compromising. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I trust you. <laughs> so you, you take care of the reins, you take hold of the wheel and let's go, let's do this thing. So the secretary of state is really vital to making sure that our elections are fair and transparent. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. And they are the ones who uh, help to or are a part of the certification of the final tally. And uh, I've, you may have re you may remember in Washington State when Christine Gregoire and Dino Rossi first, re oh, first ran I against remember. each other. Yeah. yeah. And Dino Rossi was elected our governor. And it was yep, so close. They said, we got to do a recount. So they did a recount. And guess what? In the recount, Dino Rossi was still my governor. So then the Democrats said, no, we, have, we need to have another recount. And so they had a third recount. Oh, my gosh, they found some more ballots. And then Christine Gregoire was our governor. And that was just a travesty to me. And uh, when that vote was certified, um, it, it broke my heart. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running, mm -hmm. because that certification of the ballots by the secretary of state is so very, very important. And um, I, uh, I am running for this race to make sure that to never again in our history will the truth not come out. I want that is the very most important thing. And that's a nonpartisan issue. That's not a Democrat issue. That's not a Republican issue. It's not an independent issue. Truth is what everyone deserves in Washington state. When every voter in the United States of America takes their ballot to the polls or to the drop box, they have to write the right to know that their ballot counts. It won't be manipulated by anyone. And in the end, they'll know the truth. Yeah. And I, I love that you said that it's a bipartisan issue. And I always like to tell people, listen, if you're frustrated with how things are, then you have to do your homework and you've got to be more involved in the political process in voting because voting is how we choose our elected officials. And we want people in these positions that are men and women of integrity, people who live lives of integrity. And that integrity can be seen in their families. It can be seen in their work. It can be seen in their history. And that is something that you absolutely bring to the table. Talk to the people that are listening to this from across the country that feel discouraged. Like I know there's, we got all eyes on some of these races, right? Huge races happening in places like Georgia and uh, Pennsylvania and Arizona and Ohio. And there are a lot of sort of, um, we feel like there's some energy behind conservatives right now, behind sort of changing the narrative. Because I feel like the Democrats have really thrown us a football in this. How, uh, how do you feel about sort of the direction of the country right now, given, I don't know if you saw this, Brad, but I noticed just a couple of, uh, I guess by the time this podcast airs, it will be a couple of days old that exit polling is showing that Netanyahu is going to become the prime minister of Israel again. Yeah, I've heard uh, similar things. So, you know, and I just love the country of Israel. If America ever stops backing Israel, oh, Lord Jesus, <laughs> please don't ever let that happen. But let's talk about. Uh, yeah. I would got, my eyes were filling with tears when you talked about people who are discouraged. Um, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you trust in God, um, 
Now is the time to be more excited than ever because I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. You know, I think about uh, when God called Gideon to lead uh, the children of Israel into victory. He started out with 32,000 men, and then God said, uh, too many, and reduced it down to uh, 10,000. And God said, too many, and reduced it down to 300 because he wanted the glory. And I go, rock on. And then I think about Jonathan and his armor bearer. When Jonathan said to his armor bearer, let's go up to these Philistines and perhaps God will go with us in, into victory. He didn't even know. He wasn't even assured he was going to be victorious. He said to his armor bearer, perhaps God will go with us into victory. And so I'm just super excited. I serve a God who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God of angel armies. And uh, it was so awesome mm-hmm. when the uh, one prophet uh, said to his, uh, his assistant, he said, God opened his eyes. And there on the mountains were tens of thousands of uh, the angel army. And so I know God's in control and I'm trusting him and I'm, we're going to see victory. Uh, we're going to see revival in America. Mm, I love that. And what a great place to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. So, Brad, I, I got to ask you, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, what's been happening around the country and people feeling discouraged. And you're saying, hey, don't don't feel discouraged because I believe in uh, that, that we're going to see revival in this country. But it's going to take people getting up off the bench, right? People doing what you're doing and Christians becoming involved in the political in the political sphere. And I think you and I have had the conversation before where uh, we've watched for, you know, decades now as sort of Christians have been, I guess, sort of bench sitters, if you will, in the political realm. But you and I have been talking about this for a long time, uh, the the need for God's people to really engage. It's one of the reasons why I ran for Congress. You were a huge reason why I decided to throw my hat in the ring for Congress. And like you, I didn't, uh, I wasn't successful in the primary. And I know that there are people listening to this right now who thought, I, maybe I should run for school board. Maybe I should run for city council. I could lend my voice to uh, to a position that needs to see good leadership in it, but they're afraid of failing. Uh, what do you say to the person who is thinking, what if I end up like Heidi St. John and I don't win my primary? You know, there's a great book that I'm um, reading right now um, uh, by a pastor in, in Washington, D.C. And the title of the book is in, in a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. And he says in there, if you cannot be victorious unless you're willing to accept defeat. So in other words, I played football, uh, grade school, uh, junior high, high school, college, and, and I got to play after college. And if I wasn't willing to uh, lose the game because it only happened, you know, after college, it only happened once in my five years of playing uh, that um but I knew that it could happen. So I was still had to be willing to get out on the field and give it everything that I had and, uh, and had a successful career and, and loved it. Um, so anyway, I just would tell everyone, you got to be willing to accept the risk of defeat because we don't win. Yeah. George Washington, as the commander of the Continental Army, lost more battles than he won, but he hung in mm-hmm. there and won the war. That's why we're a free and independent nation today. And freedom isn't free. So everyone uh, within the sound of my voice today needs to get in the fight because uh, we can win. And uh, so I'm just super excited about that. Um, you, you've all heard it uh, or everyone's heard it before. All it will take for the forces of evil to rule this world is enough good people to simply do nothing. And then the other saying that I love so much is, if not us, who? If not now, when? Now's the time to get in the game, to get in the fight. We can win and we can't win without you. Boy, it's so true. It's so good. So you're running as a writing candidate. And uh, and this is this is uh, something that people sort of have a hard time wrapping their head around. So I just walked my mother-in-law through the ballot this morning and my mom too, uh, showing them how to to put your name in. When they get to that position, so those of you who are in Washington State, listen up, because this is a statewide race, right? So uh, anyone who's listening to this within the state of Washington, Brad has the uh, 
Brad's going to be not going to be on the ballot. We need to write your name in. So wa- walk us through that process, Brad. OK, so like uh, we said earlier in the broadcast that I am a writing candidate. I was asked to run as a writing candidate because no other public Republicans made it through the primary. So I'm running for secretary of state's office. I've uh, filed with the PDC, filed with the office. It's all official. And but you're not going to people who watch state will not see my name on the ballot. So you're going to have to go to the secretary of state's position. You'll see two names. One of them is a Democrat. One of them claims to be an independent. Um, And then there will be a blank line. So people in Washington state who want to vote for a conservative Republican will have to write in Brad Clippert's name. It's B-R-A-D-K-L-I-P-P-E-R-T. Fill that in, that name in on the blank line at the bottom of the secretary of state's race. And to the left, there will be an open box. You fill in that box saying, I'm voting for Brad Clipper for Washington State's Secretary of State. All right, Brad. So that's it. We want people in Washington State to know that you actually do have a conservative Republican option. His name is Brad Clippert. And I am willing to just... Uh, to just back you 100% on my show and know you. I know your character. You'd be a wonderful Secretary of State. And we need good people. We have a leadership crisis in this country. And I am praying that uh, God gives us the the leaders that we need to steer us out and away from the cliff that really the far left has driven us uh, right up to. And this is absolutely true here in Washington State. I have one more question for you, Brad, in the couple of minutes that we have left. Uh, I know that that it's important. I know it's important to you because for as long as I've known you, uh, this has been sort of the cry of your heart. You've gotten involved in almost every sphere of influence that God has given you uh, the ability to speak into. And there are a lot of people listening to this. I don't care if they're in Washington or Oregon, you know, who feel here in the Pacific Northwest, we've been under the, really under the thumb of tyrannical leadership for a long time. Coming out of the, on the other side of COVID now, and people are starting to sort of get their lives back. How do we, as as believers, you know, because you're doing everything you can to step in where you are and really make a difference, and God's using you, my friend. So I hope that you're encouraged. I'm excited about this, uh, about your run, and and you've obviously got my full support. But talk to the people as we're coming out of COVID now, especially uh, people who are. Uh, maybe beyond getting beyond just having a whole bunch of little kids at home and they can actually get involved. How do you know that God wants you to run or God wants you to, because people ask me like, how am I going to know? How am I going to know? Uh, how, how can people learn to hear the voice of the Lord and walk it out in obedience as you have demonstrated so faithfully for all these years? And, and we talked about it a little bit before. Um, there's another great book out there that I recommend to people. It's called The Dream Giver. And in that book, the premise is that God places uh, his will for us in our hearts, in our dreams. And he says, don't be afraid. Uh, the author says, don't be afraid to follow those dreams because they're placed in there uh, by God, as long as they line up with God's word ex- and stuff like that, too. So step out in faith in those dreams. Be a leader. Um, and what you talked about, COVID and stuff like that. Do you see the garbage the, the people you talked about uh, earlier who've had these emergency powers and this tyrannical government we've had, we've allowed them to do that to us. And I think I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when the king says either bow down or get thrown into the fire. And they, they laugh. I just love reading that scripture. They laugh at him and they said, oh, king, we don't even have to answer you concerning this. The God we serve is able to deliver us. But even if he does not. Know this, O King, we will not bow. So I'm just encouraging everyone, be strong and courageous. I was asked by another uh, host the other day, what do, you, what do you say to parents? And I say to them, be strong and courageous. Lead your children. Don't let the government, mm. don't let society raise your children. Be strong and courageous. Lead your children. I love that. We don't co-parent with the government, right? We co-parent with the Lord of heaven's armies and our kids belong to him. And ultimately all of creation, the Bible says, belongs to the Lord. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord uh, and to the glory of God, the father. Right. And so in the meantime, we're here to give God glory. That's what you're doing. And you're doing it uh, through a run for secretary of state. If people want to find you online and find out more information about your run, where can they go? Right in Clippert.com. W-R-I-T-E-N-I-N, Clippert, K-L-I-P-P-E-R-T 
rightinclippard.com. If you want to talk to us, it's info at rightinclippard.com. And I just want to say to all of your listeners, ladies and gentlemen, there is a God who created each and every one of us. He loves us. and He's got a plan for our lives. And I can't wait. Someday I'm going to see him face to face. He's going to wrap his loving arms around me. I'm going to feel his tears of joy as they fall down his face onto my bald little head. And that same um, welcome he's going to offer. To, he offers each and every one of us. So I just encourage him to make that you would make him the Lord of your life. Brad Clippert, you are a treasure, and I'm so thankful that you've been serving the Lord faithfully for all these years. You're setting a fine example for the men and women who are watching you from uh, close up and also from far away. So thank you for that. And let us know how it goes. We'll be praying for you on the 8th. That's coming right up. People need to vote now, by the way, right? So if they've got their their ballots in hand, take them down there, take them to a, a ballot box and uh, get get those get those ballots in. And what do you do if you if you still have your ballot and you already voted for somebody else for secretary of state? The instructions are right on the front of your ballot. Just push a line through that person and write in Brad Clippert uh, below. And uh, you, then you will be voting for Brad Clippert. Me personally, I'm holding on to my ballot till election day. Um, and then I'll turn it in right at the auditor's office. So there's no chance for anyone to manipulate my ballot in that spare time. I love it. I love it. So uh, I will definitely, I'm doing, typically I do that as well. And so we're going to be praying. We know that the Lord of Heaven's armies is uh, watching over this race and he cares about the people of Washington state. God loves the people Amen. of the United States of America. And uh, I think that we've got good days ahead of us. Brad Clipper, thank you so much for coming on the show. And for those of you who want more information, I will link back to that in the show notes today. Have a great evening, my friend. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For more information on Brad Clippert and his run for Secretary of State as a write-in candidate, please go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash podcast, or you can simply go to writeinclippert.com. And I want to encourage you guys before I wrap it up today to be praying for the election, praying for fairness, praying for transparency, and praying that every vote is indeed counted and that we can see a shift in the way this nation is going. We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening today, and I will see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture.